So Scotty Scooter Miller came out with a very fun quote where he said he was faster than Tyreek Hill. Uh, obviously, I don't think that's the case, and I, I think it's really just athletes pumping themselves up. I think who cares? But also, a lot of people were saying that he's nowhere near Hill's level, and I don't agree, agree with that at all. I do think Hill was faster, but Miller's really fast. He ran a 4-3-9, which by the way, 4-3-9, you have to be so happy getting that 4-3 instead of a 4-4 there. Uh, he's an incredibly quick guy. And so I figured I'd break down some of his speed plays and just his plays in general, uh, talk about him as a receiver and what he's done well this season. So first, let's start off with the one we have to start off with. This was the uh, near Hail Mary because there was one second left, but uh, pretty close to a Hail Mary uh, in this situation. It's, you know, there's eight seconds left. So I could have tried a sideline thing, but Miller is running a deep route right here. And one thing that's interesting that I noticed uh, on one of those uh, shows where to have everyone mic'd up, they kind of broke this play down a little bit and mentioned how Miller, usually when you have someone running a go route like this, they're outside the numbers. He's currently inside the numbers, and that kind of can make potentially make corners feel as though a deep route might not be coming. Not just that, but it can do what actually ends up happening uh, during this play. Watch. Once this ball is snapped, you notice King kind of turns his hips towards the middle because he was currently lined, before the ball was snapped, he was lined up uh, further to the outside than Miller. But now because of this, Miller is getting to the outside and King kind of has to do almost a full 180 and he's just in an awkward position right here. If he was still further to the outside than Miller, like imagine this is the same situation except King is just like three yards further to the top. That's just a better position. He just got kind of caught in an awkward spot. But at the same time, this is far from a disaster. I mean, King has several yards down the field, and as we know, Miller isn't going to stop short. Uh, Miller's going to be running a go route here. And, you know, I heard a lot of people say, like, well, why not just, you know, make sure you don't get beat deep. Uh, it's okay if Miller uh, makes the catch before you. Well, not really, because if Scotty Miller caught the ball at the 20 and ran out of bounds, they had three. So, really, I think this is a clear example of don't run this coverage in this situation, which is partially why uh, Mike Pettin, the defensive coordinator, isn't getting brought back. But also what I want to talk about, because everyone's criticizing Green Bay, you have to give credit to Miller and just how quick he is, because this is a mistake that many cornerbacks would have done, and it wouldn't have mattered, because most receivers wouldn't have the speed to take advantage of it. As you see, I mean, Miller just is able to blow by him. He just has the speed, and it's obviously a perfect throw from Brady as well. That helps. But, you know, it's it's a really good example of just sometimes you can just outrun someone. And I do think that Miller has that speed that not a lot of people realize. And, yes, I do realize the, you know, the stereotype of calling a short white guy deceptively fast. But I don't think there's been anyone who's that's been the case more than Scotty Miller. Like, watch. I think this play is a great example. I really do think people underestimate Miller's speed. And part of me does wonder if, you know, the fact that he does sort of look like a slot receiver makes people not realize that he's really just a great uh, number one receiver. And by number one, I don't mean like, a, you know, a number one receiver in the sense that Mike Evans is a number one receiver. I mean, it in the sense that he plays closest to the sideline, which is called the number one receiver or uh, plus receiver. But yeah, on this play, it's a cover three zone. And it's a somewhat similar situation to the one that uh, was in Green Bay. This time, it's there's 25 seconds left, so a bit different, but somewhat similar. Miller, again, going deep, though. He's going for the end zone, so his route is essentially the exact same one. And watch how once this play starts, notice the Las Vegas corner, and notice how he's kind of just uh, sitting back, and he's waiting for Miller to make a move. It seems like he's not ready for a go route here, which again, he's giving Miller a good amount of space, and he's accepting a potential, you know, throw towards the side. He, that's what he's expecting here. This is Nevin Lawson. That's the corner for Las Vegas. And at this point, again, this is kind of one of those situations where it seems like Lawson kind of has the mindset of, okay, if I have to, you know, turn my hips and run deep, I can do that. I have enough space right now. It seems like right at this moment is when he's going to start uh, going deep and respecting the deep game. And, you know, you don't see guys doing this against Deshaun Jackson because, you know, you have to respect the deep game. But the reality is that people just, I, I feel like, and I could be wrong, but I feel like people just weren't ready for Miller's speed on several of these plays. Miller does get by Lawson, not by a lot. It was, again, a perfect throw from Brady, and obviously that's going to be a part of it. I mean, that's just a, a beautiful throw from Brady, so that obviously factors in. But I, I do think that, you know, guys aren't necessarily playing him the way they maybe should be playing him because he's a really quick guy. I'll now show this play because I think this play is going to be a play that 
I personally think could be a great sign for the future for Tampa Bay. And this was in a huge moment, by the way. So the play itself first is a cover one play and Miller's running a go route. So, you know, similar idea, different situation, but similar idea. The same situ the situation right now, though, is this is the fourth quarter of a tied game in the divisional round, a third down and five. This was actually one of the plays of the game. You know, Tyler Johnson made a great catch uh, on the third down before, and I think that got more of the, uh, you know, more of the praise, but Miller's going to come through in a big way on this one. Watch hit the beginning of his route, and watch how he kind of fakes as though he's running an out here, and making this kind of move, him being able to work on these moves is going to allow him to get more open and going to allow him to really become, uh, you know, really flourish and become the player that he can be, because he has tremendous potential, uh, you know, only in his second year, and I do think that him continuing to improve on stuff like this with his speed, it can be a huge advantage. Because watch the move. He completely gets open. It was actually a good job at a safety to come in. But Brady, again, good throw there. And, you know, if that was, if there wasn't the safety help over the top, that's a touchdown. So the reason why it was a lower throw is because the safety was there and Brady read it. Just a, a really good route by Miller. I think this one will go back to sort of my first point. Miller goes in motion to the bottom of the screen. And my first point was that people don't really respect his speed the way they should. Maybe this is the case. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But it's a you know cover three zone. And Miller's running a deep route. And, you know, what would you expect here? I think most people would expect. And I think that probably uh, Tampa Bay, when it drew this route up, expected the safety to run deep. You know, he'll, uh, Miller will take away the safety. Great. Now you have more room over the middle to operate. That's usually what these routes are for. This is the burner role. This is what you want. But Tampa Bay actually ran something very similar earlier on in the game. I don't have that play shown, but uh, Miller ran a deep route and the safety didn't cover him. And then Brady still threw it over the middle and missed the throw. But uh, that's a key thing, I think, is that Tampa Bay noticed this and said, hey, if we can get a one-on-one -on -one matchup, we'll take it. So Brady takes the snap, Scotty Miller's running deep, and again, the safety is not uh, going deep with Miller. He's instead saying, you know what, I'll trust my guy in a one-on-one -on -one spot. I don't want to leave one of these other receivers open over the middle, so I'm going to stay here. Uh, I think that's what he's doing. It's possible he just screwed up and didn't see Miller, but given that this happened multiple times, part of me wonders if this was an, an actual decision instead of just a mistake. But regardless, once again, Miller with that one-on-one -on -one matchup gets open, gets a touchdown, and that's the kind of thing with a guy like Scotty Miller. You know, he might not necessarily be the biggest name. He might not be the most well-rounded receiver, but you'll take a home run hitter. You'll take a home run hitter, and that can get you spots in the lineup. You know, in baseball, to use that analogy, You'd rather have the guy who maybe isn't a perfect player but can knock the ball out of the ballpark than the guy who can't. Well, in football, Scotty Miller is the he's the power hitter. And one last thing, I would honestly love to see Tampa Bay do this more. Obviously, you can't really reinvent the wheel uh, going into the Super Bowl, but maybe for next season, I don't know. It's just stuff like this. Get him the ball. Get him the ball in open space because he has the speed to get as many yards as possible. This is the cover three zone. Uh, you have Godwin who's running a, a curl route over in the middle. And the hope is that that kind of takes away the flat receiver a little bit and Miller could get open to the side. Or, well, really the hope is that, you know, Godwin just gets open over the middle. But if that doesn't happen, you throw it to Scotty Miller. Once the play starts, you notice Miller just stands there. So kind of screwed up my graphic a little bit. Uh, he really just, uh, it, it was supposed to, it looked a little farther than he actually does. He literally just stands there. But as you notice, the Las Vegas player who's covering the flat on that side of the field isn't close enough to Miller as he should be. And again, the logic is if they decide to throw it to someone standing at the line of scrimmage, you run up and make the tackle. But the issue with that is Miller's fast enough where he can pick up some yards. So Brady makes this throw and Miller is able to make the grab, run, pick up that first down. And again, like I say, uh, if you're going to only have one like great quality as a receiver, which I think it's really too early to tell given Miller hasn't had a ton of playing time to say he only has one great quality, but that's the only quality that I've seen so far that I can definitively say is great. And if you are going to have one definitive great quality, it better be speed because speed's the one that's most effective. Uh, obviously, route running is incredibly important, but you know, if you're in the NFL, you can probably run routes. Having that speed is just, uh, you know, uh, I guess you, route running and speed go hand in hand. But speed's very important is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on Scotty Miller. Who knows? Could end up making a big play or two in the Super Bowl. I wouldn't be shocked if that happens at all. So, yeah, should be interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>